Uh, Richard, can I talk about movement and theatre? Um, um, what do you think generally does movement bring to a, to a theatre piece rather than to a dance piece? But if you're doing theatre and you want to bring movement into it, what does that bring? I think that movement, when it's done well um, and when it's understood, um, even at our basic level, is really powerful for storytelling. So I think that when we're looking at a piece of drama, a play, we tend to read the words on the page and the words that the actors speak. And my job as a movement director is to think about those things, but thinking about how those actors move and things like the space between them, how close they are to each other when they say the words. Um, those, those, those things about um, physicality are really useful for telling, for telling stories. So, and that will often help an actor find hidden meaning in the text as well. So if we know that an actor is angry with, with two people that are having an argument, for example, it makes it very different if those two actors are very, very close together, being very, very still than if they were very far apart, gesturing wildly and shouting and being quite aggressive to each other. So, and, and there's a choice there. And I think that we, with movement, it's often important to recognize where the choices are. So is it really powerful to have stillness and have somebody, maybe a speech that you think was, was uh, the character was furious and he would be shouting. Maybe it's really important uh, or interesting for that, that character to be talking very quietly and very still. And, looking and doing, doing all the fury with his eyes. Or maybe it's really exciting to have them raging and flailing their arms around and running around the space. Uh, so we've got choices, and that's the thing about movement, you can explore them. The relationship between a movement director and a director, whose choice is it ultimately to decide when to have movement and when not to have movement? Well, ultimately, the director sort of has the final say. But when you have a good working relationship between a movement director and a director, it's the same as every other um, department in the theatre, you know got a really good lighting designer that make us a good suggestion about a moment that they can light it in this way. Um, so it becomes quite a collaborative process, same as the actors, they're allowed to have ideas. Um, uh, and if, if everybody has got an idea of what it is that we're trying to create, and you create a, an environment where everybody can voice an opinion or uh, offer a, a suggestion or a solution, that can be quite um, an inspiring and um, fulfilling environment to work in. In terms of being presented with a challenge of, for example, in Jekyll and Hyde, how do you bring to life uh, an action sequence where, for example, one of the, uh, the murders that takes place in the book and you're given the challenge of bringing that to life? Where do you start? What's the starting point? So, um, for me, that's about telling the story and how best to tell the story. So, um, and understanding what that story is and what the audience um, are hopefully reading into a movement sequence or even a scene. Um, so you need to know what's just happened, what's happening in that moment, and then the aftermath, how we leave that, that moment. So um, the transformations, we want to see um, Dr. Jekyll, and then we want to see that moment of change and transition, and then we want to see Dr. Hy um, Mr. Hyde. And those three things, those three worlds, should be very clear and the audience should know where we are at all points um, so that they can follow the story. You know, that's the most important thing for the audience to be following the action and what's happening. Uh, so in terms of uh, movement evolving out of that, where's your starting point? Where do you come in? So you've got the, you've got the clear storyline, you know the sequence of actions, but how does that start to evolve physically? So I like to give the actors tasks and I like to give them the opportunity to create uh, solutions and create ideas um, with simple things that they can try. And a lot of this is uh, trial and error and we like to create a rehearsal room where failure is completely normal. So that we aren't ever feeling like we have to get it right. We're trying things all the time that, all, that some will work, some won't work. Um, but we're hopefully getting closer to the thing that is the, uh, the finished uh, product and, and the clearest way to tell the story. Um, so the tasks, uh, might be a series of very simple things and when we combine them together they become much complicated, a much more complicated string of, of material that we have. But it will be born out of, so for example, with a transformation. It might be what part of your body is changing first or where do we put the focus of attention? Is it the hands that change first or is it, is it the, the medicine that he takes, the potion that he takes? Is he changing from the inside? And 
give me 30 seconds of what that might look like and we could take the essence of that and then put some choreography or some, some gesture or some movement over the top of that and evolve um, that way. We might think about how Jekyll and Hyde are different and their different physicalities, one's taller than the other. Um, and so how can the same actor be taller, or a taller version of himself or a shorter version of himself? What does that look like? So it's, it's giving the actors um, little challenges and it's up for them to solve those challenges and that gives me inspiration to then move them on in a different direction and, and it evolves from there. So it's never me saying, this is how you do it. It's always comes from the performers. What's the relationship between movement and music? Does, is, that imp is music important to you as a, as a source of inspiration or direction? It can be, yeah. I like to play music in the rehearsal room, um, whether or not we use it in the final um, incarnation of the show or the moment that we're creating in a piece. Um, is, is up to uh, is, is, is whether we feel we need it. But um, in the room, I like to have it going on so that we're never working in silence. And often music inspires. It can often inform the way we move. If we put on a piece of um, gentle piano music, it might inspire us to move in a quite relaxed, gentle, soft, tender way. If we put on a piece of um, heavy metal, um, it, it might encourage us to be a little bit more kind of bound and, and uh, muscular in our physicality. So um, that's a little interesting way that we can cheat. And, so, and, I, and sometimes I like to put on a piece of music that goes against what we're doing. So if we're doing a scene um, that is a, uh, at a, at a quite a explosive, maybe it's a fight scene, what happens if we put some gentle music on that plays against that? Does that then change the quality of the movement? Does it become slightly more interesting? So a punch that would, that would have just been a punch before, could that become a, 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 you know, somebody that's trying to reach out to make a connection with somebody else that then turns into a punch? Or is it a lost moment aware of a potential connection between those two characters? I don't know, you've got, the, you've got the opportunity to explore. Even with the same moves, they can all mean different things. Um, and, and music often inspires that.